Hey guys, in this video I'm going to discuss three different ways that you can program your now forever VFD that commonly comes with 6040 CNC routers from China, um, probably the 3040 and the 6090 as well come with the same uh, VFD. I'm going to go through how to program your VFD so that you can use it one of three ways. The first being by using the potentiometer on the display. Uh, the second uh, being using the keypad on the display. And the third way I'm going to discuss is how to wire and use Mach 3 to control your spindle using this VFD. For the purpose of this video, I'm only going to focus on the commands that we require to run our spindle in the three different ways that I mentioned earlier. I'll put a link to this manual down in the description and if you want to go through and look at the rest of the commands that are available feel free. So the first code is P0-000. This controls the run button on the display. Uh, so basically you have to press run and then set your speed in order to get the spindle to turn. There's three options, but we're only concerned with two. Um, zero is the keyboard control, so that's the keypad on the front of the display. Uh, one is the analog terminal control, and that would be, say, if you wanted to control turning on the uh, VFD using Mach 3. All right, the next command is P0-001. We're going to set this to zero and use main frequency source X. Uh, no matter which way we program this, this will always be zero. P0002 is our main frequency source selection. Now, we have a, a setting range from zero to seven, so let's have a look at this. So zero is the keyboard potentiometer. So obviously if we want to use the potentiometer to control the spindle, then we are going to have to set this to zero so that it uses the potentiometer. If we wanted to use the keyboard, the up and down arrows on the display, then we would set this to 1. If we want to use Mach 3, normally we would use AN1, so we would set P002 and give it a value of 2. P0-003, we don't have to do anything with this because we're not using an assistant frequency source, we're using the main frequency source, which was set in P0-001. Remember, we leave that as 0, so that's the main frequency source. P0-004, keyboard digital. This value determines the starting value. If you're going to use the up and down arrows to control your spindle, at first when I click run, it's going to set the initial spindle speed to 50 hertz. Alright, next is P0-007. Uh, this is the upper limit frequency. My spindle has a rated frequency of 400 hertz. So this is would be set to 400 for my particular spindle. P0-008 is the lower limit. We set that to 0. Uh, that's the factory default, so you probably won't have to change anything there. Uh, P0-016. Uh, this is the X1 terminal function. We actually use this uh, when we are running from Mach 3 and we set this to a value of 1, which is the default, and this is to enable the spindle to run in a clockwise direction. P0021 and P0022. This is the AN min input and the AN min input frequency. So basically if your motion control card is outputting 0 volts, then you want your spindle to be stopped, so you would set 0 hertz for the value. Uh, again with P0023 and P0024, uh, the A and max input and the max input frequency, you would set the max input to 10 volts, and the corresponding frequency for 10 volts, in my case, would be 400 hertz. So when the VFD sees 10 volts coming from your motion control card, it's going to output 400 hertz. 
Okay, so that covers the basic commands that we are going to use to set up our VFD. Now let's move to the actual VFD itself so that you can see how we input these settings into the VFD. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is how to set this up so that we can control our spindle using this potentiometer here. Uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I have my spindle currently set up to be controlled from Mach 3, um, but let's say that I wanted to go back to controlling it from this control panel here using this potentiometer and this run button. I'll show you how to program the VFD to do that. So the first thing we want to do is press the enter button. That's going to bring us into our menu. Now, as you've seen earlier, all the commands that we are changing are in this P0 menu. So if we hit enter again, it's going to bring us into all the different commands for P0. The first thing we want to look at is enabling this run button. If you, uh, okay, let's just escape out of here. If you see, I press the run button. I currently have it disabled because I'm controlling my spindle and turning it on and off from Mach 3. So the first thing we're going to have to do is enable this run button. So we'll go into P0 and go into the submenu and the command that controls this is P0000. We'll press enter again. You can see I have that set to 1. That basically disables this button and tells the VFD that I'm going to control it externally. So what we want to do is set this back to 0 hit enter and there we go so now if we hit enter to go back in to check their setting you see that it's set to zero and we just press escape 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 and there we go so now when I hit the run button you can see the light comes on and I can control the VFD now from this panel so the next thing we're going to want to do is enable this potentiometer to control the spindle speed because if I press run now and turn this, you can see the numbers aren't changing on the VFD at all. It's because I have this disabled as well, and that is being controlled by Mach 3. So, what we're going to do now is go into the menu and enable this potentiometer to control the spindle. So, to enable the potentiometer, we're going to go into P0. 002. This controls the main frequency source. And so when we go inside here, you see I have it set to 2. Now, 2 is uh, for the A in port on the VFD. So again, that's being triggered externally by my USB motion control card. So we want to set this so that the potentiometer is controlling it. And to do that, we set it to a value of zero and hit enter and escape and escape so now when we hit the run button and turn our potentiometer our spindle turns Alright, so basically I disabled Mach 3 from controlling the spindle, and now I can control it from this control panel using the potentiometer. So let's just stop this. Now let's say I wanted to use these up and down arrows to control the speed of the spindle instead of the potentiometer. How do we do that? Well, that's very simple as well. We just go back into P0-002 again and we set this to a value of 1. And we hit escape, escape. You can see that the default value is set to 50. So when I click run, it's automatically going to spin up to that speed and I can increase by holding in these keys here. And to slow it down, I hold in the down arrow, or you can slowly decrease by pressing it. So yeah, that's basically it. So I'm just going to stop this. 
All right, so now let's look at how to actually control this VFD from Mach 3. So there's two parts to setting this up. I'm going to have to program my VFD, and I'm also going to have to wire it to my motion control card. First thing we're going to do is go through the programming, and then I'll show you the wiring to the VFD itself. Okay, so the first command we have to go to is P0-000, and this is the command source, so we're going to set this to 1, which is the analog terminal control. So we set this to 1, hit enter, escape, escape. Okay, so now this is set up, the run button is disabled again, and it's set up to be triggered from Mach 3, uh, basically which goes through my USB motion control card into the VFD. Alright, so the next command we have to change is P0-002, and this is the main frequency source. Now we're going to set this to a value of 2, because this setting is controlled by the input analog terminal, AN1, on the VFD. Okay, so the next settings we're going to check are P0-007, which is the upper frequency limit, and P0-008, which is the lower frequency limit. So let's have a look at what these settings are. Okay, the upper limit is 400 hertz. My spindle is 400 hertz, so this upper limit is 400 hertz, so everything is good. So we can escape out of this. Now let's check 008. So the lower limit of my spindle is 0 hertz, so this is correct as well. So let's escape out of that. Okay, so the next command we want to look at is P0-016, and this is the X1 terminal function. This basically tells our spindle whether we want to spin it clockwise or counterclockwise. So, in my case, I only run my spindle clockwise, so that's how I'm going to set up my P0-0016. So let's go in, and I currently have my setting set to 1, which is forward run. In my case, forward run turns my spindle clockwise. So that's the way I want to run this spindle, so that's the setting I use. If I wanted to do reverse run, or counterclockwise on my spindle, I would set this to a value of 2. Okay, so let's get out of here. Okay, so the next command we need to look at is P0-0021. Okay, this is for the analog terminal minimum input. Basically on your motion control card you're going to have an output port that can output from 0 volts to 10 volts. Uh, this corresponds to the speed of your spindle. So obviously if your card is putting out 0 volts then your spindle is not going to be spinning at all. But if your card puts out 10 volts then your spindle is going to spin at the maximum speed. Or that's how I have mine set up anyway. So for the analog in minimum input my value is 0 volts. Alright so the next one we're going to look at is P0-0022. This is the minimum input corresponding frequency. So basically when we are receiving zero volts from our motion control card, we want that to correspond to zero hertz. So basically our spindle will be stopped. So I have my minimum input frequency set to zero. Okay, the next one we're gonna look at is P0-023. Now this is the analog in maximum input and we have this set to 10 volts because that's the maximum amount of voltage that's going to be input or sorry output from our motion control card to the VFD. Alright so let's have a look at P0-024. This is the analog in max input corresponding frequency. 
So when we are getting 10 volts from our motion control card, we want our spindle to spin at the maximum speed, and in my case that's 400 hertz. So I have it set to 400. Okay, so once you have these settings set up, let's have a look inside at the wiring to see how this all works. Alright, so let's have a look inside the VFD and see how we wire this up for Mach 3. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is, you see this AN1, AN2 jumpers right here? We're going to want to make sure that the AN1 jumper is set up here to 10 volts. There's an option of 20 milliamps or 10 volts. We're going to use 10 volts. So once you have that jumper set, now we can go ahead and wire our VFD. Alright, so the first wire we have going in up here is the X1 wire. So this is the wire that is going to tell the VFD that we want to spin in the forward direction, which in my case is clockwise. This can be set to any output port on your motion control card. The next wire is the green wire, which is ground. That just simply goes to the ground on your motion control card. It may be a bit hard to see where it is hooked up, but it is just hooked into the first port right below the X1. So the first terminal on the lower port. That's your common. And that goes to the ground on your motion control card. Now the third wire this white wire here that I have hooked up is the AN1 wire and that is the third terminal on the lower set of inputs. So again, X1, this controls the direction of the spindle, ground, and AN1. And AN1 goes to the 0 to 10 volt port on your motion control card. And that's basically it. So it's only three wires to hook up. Very simple. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Well, that's it for my VFD programming video. My next video is going to be another project video. I think you guys are going to like that. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please click the like button so that I know what you guys want to see. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, more project videos, please subscribe. There's going to be a lot more cool stuff coming up in the future. Thanks for watching.